Do humans have a free will? Now, in this video, I'd like to give the Islamic perspective on the issue of free will. What does Islam have to say about free will and choice? Now, the basic Islamic perspective on free will is that humans do indeed have a free will. That you're not being controlled like robots. You have your choices and you have your free will. You are making your own path. This is where sometimes people get a bit confused. You see, now while Islam does teach that you have a free will and that you're not being controlled like a mindless robot, while Islam does teach that, Islam also teaches that God knew everything you were going to do before you even did it. Just because he knows doesn't mean you're being controlled like a robot. That's the point that you really need to understand. When I was a Muslim, the concept of free will gave me a lot of trouble. When you grow up in a Muslim family, there is a good chance that you have heard people say, Inshallah, which means if God wills it, when they talk about something they plan to do in the future. Or you may have heard people say, Masha'Allah, which means God has willed it, usually after hearing some kind of good news. You might also hear about the book that God uses to record every event that will happen. Because of these and maybe other reasons, I'm sure a good majority of Muslims have asked questions like, is God causing everything? Is he making people do what they do? Is this fair? Do we have free will? The vast majority of Muslims will come to the conclusion that Sami Zatari provides in his video. When I was Muslim, I came to a similar conclusion as well. The conclusion is as follows. God is beyond logic and imagination. God is beyond time and the universe. God knows the past, the present, and the future. God does not intervene in my choices, and therefore my actions are caused by the choices I make. We are free to choose right and wrong according to our own will. Therefore, we have free will. Even though there are arguments that claim omniscience and omnipotence are not compatible, as far as a person of faith is concerned, this line of reasoning is enough to satisfy the questions they had regarding free will. I was satisfied with this conclusion myself, until I read the Quran. Muslims believe that the Quran is the word of God, and it was revealed to Muhammad in the 7th century, and Muhammad will be the last person to hear from God. This is rather unfortunate because all we have is the Quran to judge what God is like. So what is God like according to the Quran? Does he grant us free will? Do we have partial free will? Does he let us choose our own destiny? Does he feel the need to interfere in human affairs? More importantly, does he intervene in human lives in such a manner that he predestines the fate of every individual? In order to try to answer these questions, let's look at what the Quran says. Chapter 2 verse 284 he forgiveth whom he pleaseth, and punisheth whom he pleaseth. Well, that doesn't tell us much, so let's keep reading. Chapter 3 verse 26 says that Allah gives power to whom he wants, takes power away from whom he wants, gives honor to whom he wants, takes it away from whom he wants. So it seems like God does interfere in human affairs. Let's keep reading. Chapter 2 verse 269 he granteth wisdom to whom he pleaseth, and he to whom wisdom is granted receiveth indeed a benefit overflowing, but none will grasp the message but men of understanding. But to be a man of understanding you need wisdom, but if wisdom is granted to whom Allah pleases, well, what is he complaining about? Chapter 6 verse 125 Those whom Allah willeth to guide, he openeth their breast to Islam. Those whom he willeth to leave straying, he maketh their breast close and constricted. Chapter 22, verse 54, and that those on whom knowledge has been bestowed may learn that the Quran is the truth from thy Lord. Again, knowledge has to be given to people by Allah in order to understand his message. So if he doesn't give us the knowledge, why is he complaining when people don't understand his message? Chapter 6, verse 88, this is the guidance of Allah. He giveth that guidance to whom he pleaseth. So does this mean our free will doesn't really matter? Do we have to count on God guiding us rather than letting us find it ourselves by making our own choices, choices that are unaided by divine will? 
Think about this. God may have constricted your breasts, and as a consequence of Allah's actions you might not believe. Then what is Allah complaining about if he guideth and leadeth astray those whom he willeth? Chapter 2 verse 26 He causes many to stray and many he leads into the right path, but he causes not to stray except those who forsake the path. So Allah himself causes people to be on the wrong path. For example, I personally don't believe Allah exists, and therefore I have forsaken Islam. And this is because I don't see any reason to believe that any of this is true. To the contrary, I do find reasons to think that Islam is man-made. So if Allah did exist, according to this verse, He will lead me to be astray, rather than giving me signs or guidance to help me regain my faith. Why would it be fair for God to lead me astray and then hold me accountable for what He made me do? Chapter 3 verse 160 If Allah helps you, none can overcome you. If He forsakes you, who is there after that that can help you? Chapter 4 verse 143 whom Allah leaves straying, never wilt thou find for him the way. Chapter 42 verse 8 He admits whom he will to his mercy. Chapter 58 verse 22 For such he has written faith in their hearts, and strengthened them with a spirit from himself. Chapter 7 verse 178 Whom Allah does guide, he is on the right path. Whom he rejects from his guidance, such are the persons who perish. Let's assume for a second that all the claims that Muslim apologists make are true. Let's assume that the Quran has scientific miracles in it, that Mecca is at the golden ratio point, that there is a miracle baby in Russia. Let's assume all that is miraculous and supernatural. Many Muslims in the past have tried to convince me of these, but I honestly don't see any of them as being genuine. And this is because, if the Quran is true that is, this is because no one can help me if God is leading me astray. Chapter 17 verse 97 It is he whom Allah guides that is on true guidance. It seems pretty clear that Allah guides some of us to heaven and leads some of us into hell by sending us astray. I guess Allah just does what he wants, eh? But there is a problem here. To be honest, all the verses that I displayed so far does not really refute the concept of free will. Even though Allah guides and misguides whomever he wants, there is nothing here to suggest that we humans are incapable of still making the right or wrong choices. Muslims who want to respond to this video might bring verses such as chapter 2 verse 286 which talks about the soul in the following manner. It gets every good that it earns and it suffers every ill that it earns. Muslims might use similar verses to argue that we have free will, blah blah, God is beyond your logic, blah blah blah, you atheists believe everything came from nothing, blah blah blah. But in fairness, their argument could be true. From all the verses we have seen so far, maybe God is simply beyond my logic, and I could be missing something, or maybe God has a divine strategy where everything works out just right. So it's still possible that we have free will. Or do we?